am a Ted Lepther. I'm on the selection committee for the Indianapolis LGBT Film Festival, and I'm here talking to the director and some of the cast of It's Time, one of our films that we selected this year. Hey guys, uh, why don't you go around and introduce yourself, and then if, if you played a character, kind of your, your character that you played. Yeah, I'm uh, Rob Vaughn. I can't act to save my life, and um, I am the director. I'm Jennifer Gibson. I am a producer on the film, and I also played uh, Anna, Anne, pardon me, who is Grace's mom in the film. And I'm uh, Charles Martin Smith. I play Red, the uh, the hearse driver uh, in the film, and I also help to produce it. And my name is Gregory Henderson, and I play Deacon John in the film, and I was not involved with producing it. <laughs> the uh give yeah, you a credit if you want yeah it, <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so it, it was a lovely film a, a road trip film a coming of age film um some uh, uh, certainly um lots of, of, of uh, symbolism of uh, religious symbolism um uh there um um uh, I don't think I'll be revealing a whole lot to say because uh, Charles mentioned he was the hearse driver. Uh, this the road trip kind of starts out in a hearse uh, as 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 um, the uh, uh, the the main character is is uh, trying to find a place to deal with uh, her her uh, her father's uh, uh, her, her dead father's ashes uh, and also uh, trying to kind of get to know him along the way. So just lots of lots of themes covered here. Uh, certainly took us all uh, all on a journey. Um, I, um, Rob, do you just kind of want to talk about maybe just the, the bigger themes of the film or the, the, the I, I guess I kind of summarize it, but maybe you can probably summarize it better than I, I did. I, uh, I would say this, to me, this is an allyship film. And mm -hmm. uh, as Jennifer says, um, you know, the fact that we we need an allyship film in 2023 is kind of sad, but we feel it's uh, necessary particularly with the cultural and political landscape. And we, we personally have, you know, friends, family that have been through a lot and have been othered, as you say. And we wanted to, we wanted to make a film that's sort of a, an allegorical bridge that folks can follow because I'm 51 years old and I joke, I'm an old dog, but I can still learn a new trick. And I am a, a, a you know, a, a white straight male and I am aware of all the privilege, but I, you know, we wanted to say something and, and, and make a social impact because there's a lot of folks that are hurting and that are, that are not, you know, I mean, this is simplifying it, but whose human rights are being violated and, and, and they're not, you know, and, and we were just, kind of done with that. And so we uh, we reached out to Allie Jennings, who's this brilliant LGBTQ writer in Los Angeles that Jen had developed a project with. And- Who was sad she can't make it tonight, by the way. She, oh, yeah. You know, sadly, like everybody in our business right now with uh, the strikes, um, everybody's got to take a, a job where they can to make some money. So Allie's making the honest buck right now. But uh, sorry to cut you off, Rob. Oh, yeah. I just want to say that she definitely wanted to be here. Yeah. And thank you, Allie, where you're listening somewhere because the script is. Yeah. yeah. Allie wrote a really lovely script and uh, you guys developed it with her. But the, uh, the inner truth of this uh, teenage girl, you, you, every word of this script, you know that Allie feels it, understands it. This is her creation. And uh, we had a wonderful um, actress, young actress from Toronto named Anwen O'Driscoll, who played the lead. And yeah, the she, she did great. Yeah. She good. She's mm -hmm. a really remarkable talent. And mm -hmm. so for me, playing opposite her, this crusty old uh, alcoholic hearse driver, Vietnam vet, who's also carrying, uh, I mean, he's carrying around a lot of damage. And uh, uh, the way that Ali was able to write that because I don't think she's ever been a middle-aged Vietnam War veteran. I don't think she's ever done that. But, but uh, it's really, I have. Well, but you have. That's right. <laughs> uh, you can't but, act, I thought. 
it's a remarkable script and it and the way the story unfolds again you guys developed it with her but the unfolding of the story takes the audience on this amazing journey and then at the very end and i will not spoil it but <laughs> it it lands in yeah. such an impactful way it's, it's a really beautiful told story well, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard not to uh, spoil it in uh, in this discussion here, but we definitely want people to see the film. Uh, yeah. But it's hard not to because uh, there's um, um, uh, where uh, they end up is is um, I, I think a rather telling and rather profound. So, yeah, it is. It is indeed. And you know, for all of the wonderful serious topics that that this film covers, uh, it's really funny. But there's a mm -hmm. lot of wonderful comedy and a lot of wonderful character stuff in it. This is, it's not a diatribe. It is a really entertaining, but heartfelt film, beautifully directed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. I, I, yeah. Oh, I was just going to add to that, that, um, you know, we, we didn't, we wanted to make a very humanistic story. And Charlie and I are both fathers and Charlie was instrumental in the development of this as well. So mm -hmm. we brought that side of it and uh, Allie brought, brought the daughter and and then we, you know, and then we tried to cast and crew as authentically as we could um, because the making of the film became, you know, I always say the making of the film almost becomes what the film is. And, and you know, mm -hmm. it just invariably happens. And the making of the film was everybody with really good intentions trying to understand one another and say, how can we do better by you? Um, yeah. And uh, and we we didn't, it's interesting, you're right, we do talk about religion in it, but we didn't want to do sort of a political hit job um, at all. You know, we, we wanted to make it nuanced. And uh, which is, you know, one of the reasons I called my dear friend Greg uh, Henderson out of retirement to play that. <laughs> yes, so, so, so uh, Greg, you, uh, you get to play a pastor. Uh, do you... Um... Um, can you just kind of tell us some, maybe about your character and uh, just for my own curiosity, do you, do you, do you have, um, uh, what's your relationship with the church? Uh, if you even have one. Oh, I have a doozy of one. That's, <laughs> maybe, maybe, um, maybe that's what, what Rob, uh, meant by authentic casting. Although I don't know, Rob, that you knew all about my past, but, um, um, I think of, of um, the, the other people on the panel right now um, are a bunch of breeders and I'm not. Um, so uh, the, I think when I first read the script, um, I was blown away by how much my, the, my character parallels my own life. Not obviously not, not all of it, but I was raised Southern Baptist um in oklahoma um and i don't think i need to say any more than that um i, I did have somewhat accepting parents all, although um uh, over the years more and more things came out about my lifestyle choice um and expressions like that that most make most gay people cringe um because uh, it is not a choice so being able to play this part, albeit small, it's 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 pivotal, um, and uh, yes, I felt good after it was over um, about the acting, but it, it it was so close to who I am in many ways that I didn't I didn't have to act much. Um, I think a, a, a lot of what drives the, this character um, is his love, and I can't I can't give anything away. Um, for um, a certain character that uh, is not necessarily um, someone that you see a lot in the film, um, and I've been in a in a relationship with with my husband for thirty three years. Uh, we've been legally married ten years, um, and to Rob's earlier point and and everybody's earlier point, it is scary what's happening in this world right now. Um, and, and we've never been militant gays per se. Um, uh, we, we, I mean, we could have been, uh, you know, uh, aware of the, of the, of the era. Um, I'm, I'm 59 turning 60 this year and my husband turned 65 in four days. 
Mm. Um, nice. So we we were there in the crux of the AIDS crisis. Um, so for for me, and I said this in, a, in kind of a testimonial that that Jen had asked some of the actors to do. For me, growing up in the Southern Baptist environment, um, not unlike the, the lead character wanting to be what I call the best boy in the world, <laughs> always. Um, and did everything right, straight A's, everything was about pleasing my parents. Why would I, why would I choose something that is not going to please them unless I had no other choice? Right, right, yeah. And there's a lot, there's a lot of that, there are a lot of those themes in the film. So it, it just means the world to me to be able to have been a part of it. And now I'm going to get all teary. I'm, I'm fighting a cold and I'm, I'm an emotional wreck most of the time. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's, that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you for, yeah, for sharing that. Yeah. This is, um, and, and you, you live in Oklahoma now? No, I live in New York. Okay. Uh, I left Oklahoma at 18. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been kind of, a, I'm on, on career number three, but, but acting has always been an, an underlying part of my life, but I went to, to the East to, to college and got a degree in international finance, but then went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts after that, and then was an actor for about 12 years. It's where I might, met my husband, we met on stage, and then I wound up on Wall Street because I got scared, then that the 9-11 happened, I was working down there during all of that, and, and my husband and I started a hotel in the Catskill region of New York State, which is extremely theatrical. Um, they're, they're theme rooms, all 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 based on on lots of different fantasies um and lots of films actually yeah uh, you know what i'm just gonna pause to do a shameless plug yeah what Greg has created in new york the roxbury is like it's it, it's it's astonishing and it's a fever dream and you know it, i always say it doesn't matter if you're acting or writing or directing it's always the same creative energy right mm -hmm. but you're channeling it in different ways yeah and so Greg and Joe never stopped creating, and I and, and I and it's not fair for me to say, but I like to act like I brought the the rookie, you know, out of retirement to come pitch in the in the, in the, you know, in the game. I thought that was Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, like uh, what we frequently say to our guests, and and to what I was saying earlier about social media, uh, that has been a, a wonderful outlet for for acting and so on. But hospitality, at least the way we've done hospitality, it's very similar to to being an actor. It's all about wanting to please an audience, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it's that's all it's all about. You want them to be happy. You want to touch them in some way. So yeah. and, and Charles Martin Smith touched me as well. I, I have to give a plug to him and how kind he was to me on the set. I had not been on a set in in many years and I wasn't around you long. Charles, but um, I actually learned a lot from you that day. So, and and congratulations on your recent award um, in in Fort Lauderdale. Thank you. That's really sweet of you. No, I really enjoyed working with you. I we uh, I thought the scenes played really well. You know, actors were what what is the line from Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead? We're actors. We're the opposite of people. <laughs> 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 it's a camaraderie when you meet another actor that you know is an actor. Yeah, down here, there's a connection. There's always that connection. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, Jen, your uh, character was a little bit, um, maybe a little bit less likable. Can you talk about your character and and how you um, uh, played her, or, or uh, just uh, how you kind of got into that character? Uh, because you're uh, very different than that character in real life. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. If I've done, if I've portrayed that, then I'm grateful because, yeah, this is, um, I don't think I'm giving anything away to say that Anne is not at all supportive of having an LGBTQ child. And I couldn't understand where that would come from. First of all, I'm, you know, ally to the community. Second of all, my child, there's just nothing that I have a daughter and there's absolutely nothing she could do that would make me turn to something so destructive as conversion therapy. And 
I had to find a way to humanize her and figure out how I could play her without judging her because I judged her so much because it's a terrible thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I realized when, and I didn't grow up in a religious household, so I didn't have that background, but doing the research that I did, uh, it's a lot of fear. Um, certain groups like to use fear and it's very, very effective if people don't have critical thought. So, um, yeah, when I got to fear and just the thought that my child was going to burn in hell, if I didn't take this step, that was the only place that I could find common ground to her, though she made a terrible mistake, terrible. Uh, but yeah, that was where I came in to it. Yeah, the uh, my uh, so I I uh, I come from a, a religious family. They're 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 pretty religious, uh, um, and uh, I'm I'm a gay man, uh, and and I can say that um, it was um, easy for me to kind of like project on I think my own mom, my own father, kind of onto onto that character um, who very much loved her child, loves her child, but also because of um her religious belief she really thought that really, that was the right thing to do so yeah it's it's it's, it's a very um uh, confusing relationship isn't it it's that you almost have to hold like two like for us hold like two very different ideas and have this person believe they're the same idea kind of yeah it's it's, it's a it's a very hard thing to play i would imagine well i'm really glad that uh you saw the human side of her because i don't think that it you know, the film would encourage people to grow. And, you know, with due respect to your mom, she, in my opinion, she just didn't love you right there. You know, you deserve to be loved better in that situation. You just did. And hopefully if somebody can see themselves in Anne and go, oh man, I messed that up, or I don't want to mess that up in that way, then that's phenomenal because we've been doing some work with um, free mom hugs and they're going to be coming uh, to one of our screenings and I'm obsessed with that group. And to <laughs> me, it's like, that's how you love your kid. Right. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, I think we're about to run out of time. I, I feel like we just started talking, doesn't it? Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, and uh, wrap this up. Um, thank you all so much um, uh, for talking to me today uh, and and for making this film. So it was it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, uh, Robert I, or Rob, I don't know if you have like any kind of a final words you want to say or or, or uh, kind of final thoughts to to wrap up our discussion. What I want to say is we can do better and we should do better and we should try to do better. We're going to all make mistakes, but if the intention is right. If there's love and, and and empathy and understanding and, and even just if that is your intention, even if you screw it up, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? All the mistakes can be made, but just keep trying because we need to do better by each other. And and I want my daughter uh, to grow up in a better world. And and I think everybody would agree with that statement. And and, and so I, I hope I hope this film can speak louder than any politician. And, and connect with people. And I'm just grateful to you, Ted, and, and the festival for playing the film. Yeah, thanks, Ted. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's us who, who are thanking you for sure. Uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a, a really good point, uh, uh, Rob. It's just, uh, it's, it's hope and optimism, but it's going to take work. And it's, it's uh, nothing worthwhile is easy, right? It's, it's, it's going to take a lot of work, but it's work that's worth doing. So, that's good. all right. Well, uh, again, thank you guys for uh, um, uh, for talking to, uh, to us today. And we'll see you, see you soon. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.